Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to present our research on recovery studies of microbiological sampling methods to support cleaning validation in the pharmaceutical industry. This work, conducted by Amida Rubashvili and Alexandre Tsiklauri, addresses a critical aspect of pharmaceutical manufacturing that often doesn't receive enough attention, ensuring the cleanliness of shared equipment to prevent cross-contamination. In the pharmaceutical industry, maintaining the cleanliness of shared manufacturing equipment is paramount. It's not just about visible cleanliness, we're talking about microscopic levels of contamination that can have serious consequences. Our study stems from a gap we identified in current guidelines. While there's a lot of focus on chemical residues, the microbiological aspects of cleaning validation are often underemphasized. This gap poses a real risk to drug quality and patient safety. Our work aims to bridge this gap by developing robust microbiological sampling methods. Our primary aim was to validate two sampling methods, direct swab sampling and indirect rinse sampling. We wanted to combine these with microbiological enumeration tests to accurately determine bio-burden on shared manufacturing equipment surfaces. This isn't just an academic exercise, it's about developing techniques that can be reliably used in real-world pharmaceutical facilities. We focused on creating methods that not only work well but also comply with good manufacturing practice, GMP, requirements. The end goal? to confirm that pharmaceutical formulations produced on shared facilities are free from the risk of microbiological contamination, materials and equipment. Now, let's dive into our methodology. We used a variety of materials in our study. These included sterile saline solution for moistening swabs, sterile 10 cm polyester swabs, and sterile screw cap test tubes containing 10 ml of saline solution. We prepared coupons measuring 10 by 10 cm, made of three different materials, plastic, glass, and stainless steel. These materials were chosen to represent the various surfaces found in pharmaceutical manufacturing equipment. For cleaning and disinfection, we used a disinfectant detergent solution of 0.25% quaternary ammonium salts and 70% isopropanol. Our challenge microorganisms included five species commonly found in pharmaceutical environments, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Candida albicans, Escherichia coli, and Bacillus subtilis. We used specialized equipment like a UV vis spectrophotometer and a densitometer to prepare our microbial suspensions accurately. Sampling methods. We employed two distinct sampling methods in our study. The first was swab sampling. In this method, we moistened a sterile swab with sterile saline and used it to sample a 100 square centimeters area of our test coupons. We used a specific technique, passing the swab over the surface in an overlapping zigzag pattern, first vertically, then horizontally after rotating the swab. This ensures thorough coverage of the sampled area. Our second method was rinse sampling. Here, we rinse the coupon with a fixed volume of 100 milliliters of sterile water for injection, collecting the rinse in a sterile beaker. This method is particularly useful for sampling irregular surfaces or larger areas. After sampling, we processed our samples for microbiological enumeration. For swab samples, we vortex the swab in saline solution. For rinse samples, we used membrane filtration. We then plated our samples on appropriate growth media, tryptic soy agar for bacteria and saberoid dextrose agar for fungi. Bacterial plates were incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 3 days, while fungal plates were incubated at 25 degrees Celsius for 5 days. Sample preparation for recovery studies 1. Preparing samples for our recovery studies was a meticulous process. We started by adjusting our bacterial suspensions to a specific optical density using a buffer diluent of 0.05% polysorbate 80 solution. For fungal suspensions, we adjusted to a 5.0 McFarlane standard. We then prepared our inoculum solutions using a standard serial dilution method. This allowed us to achieve the precise concentrations needed for our study. We prepared several types of samples. Our test samples involved inoculating each type of coupon surface with a known quantity of microorganisms, 100 L, containing about 10 squared CFU for swab sampling and 1 milliliter, about 10 cubed CFU for rinse sampling. We also prepared various control samples, negative controls, sterile swabs in saline, positive controls, swabs inoculated with known quantities of microorganisms, and blank controls, untreated coupons swabbed with sterile saline. See, sample preparation for recovery studies too. This slide provides a visual representation of our sample preparation process. As you can see, 
We start with our microbial suspensions, adjust them to the correct concentration, then use these to inoculate our test coupons. We prepare our various control samples in parallel. After allowing time for the inoculum to dry on the surfaces, we perform our sampling methods, either swabbing or rinsing. Finally, we plate our samples and incubate them for enumeration. This process was repeated for each of our five test microorganisms and on each of our three surface materials. It's a labor-intensive process, but this thoroughness is crucial for ensuring the reliability and reproducibility of our results. Calculation of recovery. After incubation, we counted the colony-forming units, CFU, on each plate. We then used these formulas to calculate our recovery rates. The first formula calculates the percentage recovery for each individual microorganism. Here, FU1 is the average number of recovered colonies, and FU2 is the number of colonies we initially inoculated onto the surface. The second formula calculates the mean recovery across all five of our test microorganisms. This gives us an overall picture of how well our sampling methods perform across different microbial species. These calculations allow us to quantify the effectiveness of our sampling methods and compare them objectively. They also allow us to compare recovery rates across different surface materials and between our swab and rinse methods. Recovery Studies Results This table presents the core results of our recovery studies. Let's break it down. The columns show the number of CFUs recovered for each of our five test microorganisms, using both swab and rinse sampling methods. The rows represent our different test conditions, the three surface materials we tested, plus our control samples. Several key observations stand out. First, note the variation in recovery rates between different microorganisms. E. coli, for instance, consistently shows higher recovery rates than the other species. Second, we can see differences between our surface materials. Plastic generally yields the highest recovery rates, followed by stainless steel, with glass showing the lowest rates. Our control samples performed as expected. The positive controls show the total number of CFUs we aim to recover, while our negative and blank controls show no growth, confirming the sterility of our materials and environment. Charts. These charts provide a visual representation of our key metrics, mean recovery rates and relative standard deviations for each microorganism, comparing our swab and rinse sampling methods. The bar chart on the left shows the mean recovery rates. As you can see, the swab method, in blue, consistently shows higher recovery rates compared to the rinse method, in orange, across all microorganisms. E. coli shows the highest recovery rate for both methods, while C. albicans shows the lowest. The line graph on the right shows the relative standard deviations. This is a measure of the precision of our methods. Lower RSD values indicate higher precision. We can see that the swab method generally shows lower RSDs, indicating better precision compared to the rinse method. Key findings. Now, let's discuss some key findings from our study. First, we observed a clear trend in recovery rates across our different surface materials. Plastic consistently yielded the highest recovery rates, followed by stainless steel, with glass showing the lowest rates. This is likely due to differences in surface characteristics. Plastic, being slightly porous, may allow better retention of microorganisms, while glass, being very smooth, may allow them to be more easily washed away. E. coli consistently showed the highest recovery rates across both sampling methods and all surface types. This suggests that E. coli might be a good choice as a representative organism in cleaning validation studies. The swab sampling method showed higher overall recovery rates compared to the rinse method, 60.5% versus 46.8%. This suggests that swabbing might be more effective at removing microorganisms from surfaces, although both methods showed acceptable performance. Importantly, our negative control and blank samples showed no growth across all tests. This confirms the sterility of our materials and environment, validating the integrity of our experimental setup. In conclusion, our study has successfully developed and validated swab and rinse sampling methods for microbiological contamination testing on pharmaceutical equipment surfaces. Both methods showed good recovery rates, exceeding 36%, with high precision as indicated by our RSD values. The swab sampling method slightly outperformed the rinse method in terms of both recovery rate and precision. However, both methods proved suitable for cleaning validation in pharmaceutical environments. Our work contributes significantly to filling the gap in current guidelines regarding microbiological aspects of cleaning validation. By providing robust, validated methods for detecting microbial contamination on equipment surfaces, we're helping to ensure the safety and quality of pharmaceutical products. Moving forward, we recommend that pharmaceutical companies consider incorporating these methods into their cleaning validation protocols. 
future research could explore the application of these methods to a wider range of surface materials and microbial species. Closing. Thank you for your attention. This research provides a robust framework for microbiological sampling and cleaning validation processes, contributing to safer pharmaceutical manufacturing practices. I'm now happy to take any questions you may have about our methodology or findings.